In this study, we're comparing the efficacy of post-seed applications of melted urea and UAN for increasing wheat protein. The study was developed by ECRF and Parkland College and is being conducted across Saskatchewan at various agri-arm locations. Before we look at this year's results, let's take a step back and look at last year's results. Last year, seven agri-arm sites participated in this study, and so these results are the average of those locations. The blue bars represent the wheat yield, and the orange line represents the wheat protein, the grain protein. The first bar here is 70 pounds of actual nit nitrogen that is side-banded. The next bar over is 100 pounds of nitrogen that is side-banded at seeding. You can see that that extra 30 pounds of nitrogen gave us a bit of a yield bump and gave us a considerable protein boost as well. The last three treatments here are looking at split applications. So each one of these bars has the 70 pounds of nitrogen side-banded at seeding and then has an extra 30 pounds of nitrogen uh, either as UAN dribble banded pre-boot or UAN foliar sprayed post anthesis or UAN dribble banded post anthesis. And the thing to note here is that each one of these split applications of nitrogen did increase yield and protein relative to the 70 pounds of nitrogen side banded at seeding. However, it did not increase yield or protein relative to just putting all that nitrogen down as 100 pounds of nitrogen side banded at seeding. So the take home message from this is that it's better just to put all the nitrogen down at seeding as opposed to doing these split applications. However, split applications may have a place if you have under fertilized your crop and you could think of this as a rescue treatment. There are a few differences between the different timings of UAN put down. There's a bit of a yield bump here, or there's a bit of a protein bump here uh, from a foliar application of UAN post anthesis. And I suspect that's mostly because this application as a foliar spray burnt the crop more so. UAN will burn leaves. So the question that gets asked is how would melted urea compare to UAN? The melted urea is simply dissolved urea and it's supposed to be softer on the crop causing less leaf burn. So that was one of the objectives of this year's study. So now let's review what the treatments were and explain the results. Okay, so in 2019 this trial was conducted at all eight agri-arm sites across Saskatchewan. Here are the results averaged over all eight sites. Increasing the rate of side banded urea from 70 to 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre modestly increased yield as indicated by the blue bars and grain protein as indicated by the orange line. All other treatments to the right are split applications of nitrogen where 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre have been applied to a base rate of 70 pounds of nitrogen per acre of side banded urea. Applying 30 pounds of nitrogen per acre as a dribble band of undiluted urea has increased protein relative to our 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre check. Dribble banding UAN later, post anthesis, has increased protein even more, which is not unexpected since late season application of nitrogen is known to favor the increase in protein over an increase in yield. Oddly, Increases in protein are less when diluted UAN at 14% nitrogen is used instead of undiluted UAN at 28% nitrogen. This occurred when applications were applied post anthesis and at the boot stage. Proteins tended to be higher when either UAN or dissolved urea were applied post anthesis as a broadcast foliar spray instead of a drill band. Maybe this occurred because foliar sprays tended to cause more leaf burn. However, leaf burn from foliar sprays were significantly less with dissolved urea compared to UAN, but these differences didn't seem to affect yield or protein. Here is a picture of the leaf burn difference between UAN on the left and dissolved urea on the right 
at the Yorkton site when applied as a broadcast spray. So in many cases, split applications were able to increase protein beyond what was achieved by just putting all the nitrogen down at seeding. However, these higher protein treatments also tended to be somewhat lower yielding. So let's check out the economics. This graph represents the economics for all the sites averaged together. These bars are the gross returns plus the protein premiums minus the cost of nitrogen and minus the cost of applying the split application, if applicable. So economic comparisons here are all on even footing. Protein premiums are based on a wide spread of 66 cents per percent per bushel to accentuate the benefit of the protein increases. So the bar to beat is the economic returns for 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre of side banded urea. This level of return is indicated by the long red arrow. You can see there are only a couple of split applications that generated more income. But these increases are only a couple bucks per acre, which hardly makes the split application worthwhile. But the economics did change somewhat from site to site. So let's look at the economics for each site individually. This is Indian Head. You can see none of the split applications came close to being more economical than just putting all the nitrogen down at seeding. Even foliar applications, which resulted in much higher protein, were not more economical because the yield for these treatments were considerably lower. Have a look at the yield and protein data for this site. Look at how high the grain proteins are for the foliar application relative to the 100 N check. But the yield is also relatively lower. So in the end, foliar nitrogen was still not as economical as just putting all the nitrogen down at seeding. None of the split applications of nitrogen proved to be more economical at Melfort, Scott, or Yorkton. At the irrigation site at Outlook, there were three split applications which proved to be more economic. This was particularly true for the undiluted UAN dribble banded post anthesis. This occurred because there was a very strong protein spike for this treatment. The reason for this is really not very clear. At Prince Albert, there were also a number of split applications which generated more gross income. This is because many of the split applications had higher yields compared to the 100 N check. At Redvers, gross returns were very low for the 100 N check due to an unusually low yield for this treatment. But if you make economic comparisons against the 70 N check instead, the benefit of split applications is not very large. At Swift Current, the economic returns for the 100 N check were also low due to an unusually sharp drop in protein when moving from 70 to 100 pounds of nitrogen of side banded urea. Again, this doesn't make much sense and economic gains of split applications are reduced if we compare them against the 70 N check instead. Conclusions. In 2018, you'll recall that the split applications of nitrogen did not result in higher protein or yield compared to side banding all the nitrogen at seeding. Thus, there would be no economic gains from this practice. In this study this year, in 2019, split applications of nitrogen often resulted in higher protein compared to applying all the nitrogen at seeding. So better than the year before. But in this case, it also often resulted in lower yield as well. So as a result, few cases of split applying nitrogen were more economical than just side banding all the nitrogen at seeding still. Leaf burn could be reduced by dribble banding instead of broadcast foliar sprays or using dissolved urea instead of UAN. However, this did not translate into any economic gains. I'd like to thank Adopt and Sasquip for their financial support. Sasquip will be funding one more year of this trial, so stay tuned.